Welcome to the Human Performance Outliers podcast with your hosts, Dr. Sean Baker and Zach Bitter. At Human Performance Outliers podcast, we dive into a wide range of topics revolving around health, nutrition, and physical fitness. If you enjoy the show and wish to support us, please visit patreon.com forward slash HPO podcast. If you do not use Patreon but still wish to support us, please also consider checking out our PayPal page at paypal.me forward slash HPO pod. The link to both of those can also be found in the show notes. Finally, please consider subscribing to us on your favorite podcast listening platform. Now, on to the next topic. Yeah, so Zach's going to start recording now. And then basically, Sean, why don't you uh, introduce us? Uh, essentially, you got the MD and the JD. Did you become a lawyer first or a doctor first? Or, you know, my ex wife did the same thing. She's MD and then got JD afterwards. So tell us a little bit about your background and then we can sure. get into all this. So I originally stuff got started in law enforcement and worked as a uniform police officer. And then uh, during my college years and after college, I uh, continued in law enforcement. And actually went into uh, narcotics. I did undercover narcotics work and organized crime. Got interested in the criminal justice system from a legal perspective. So actually went on to law school and practiced uh, after I graduated from law school at Villanova University uh, for about three years as a criminal prosecutor and got very interested in narcotics prosecution and substance abuse because of my undercover narcotics work and and after doing that, uh, you know, I met uh, some other attorneys that were interested in science and we would talk about things. And I, I'd always been interested in science. And I think uh, throughout my legal career, uh, scientific application to my legal uh, prosecutions were of interest to me. So I decided to go back to college. Uh, I'd originally gone to Penn State as a criminal justice major, but I returned to Villanova University when I went to law school and entered a post-baccalaureate program, uh, basically going back and taking my pre-med courses, full year of biology and chemistry and organic chemistry. And so uh, I worked uh, at nighttime as a, as a security guard, even though I was an attorney. Um, I, I worked as a night watchman, which was a great way to uh, go through grad school. I just sat there and studied. Uh, today I do a stand-up desk instead of sitting. <laughs> but, uh, I, I studied all night long, got straight A's, and did very well on my MCATs, enough to go to medical school, and uh, got a scholarship through the Army, uh, HPSB program, and thank you for your service, Sean. I know you're a former Air Force uh, a surgeon, so the Army paid my way through medical school, and then I trained after I got out of medical school through the Army in emergency medicine, so I'm actually a residency-trained um, emergency medicine physician and practiced for about 20 years emergency medicine until I just gradually got super interested in health and reversing disease. That brings me up to where pretty much where I am today. Sean, so you, you know, and I've talked to you uh, before privately and you're doing a lot of stuff with MRIs and in your specialty, how did you get into this MRI sort of thing? Yeah. Yeah. That's a great question. So, you know, we use MRIs in the ER to evaluate for acute stroke and small uh, signs of ischemic disease, not so much for cancer because we're less worried about emergency uh, cancer and emergency medicine. But uh, I had some familiarity, of course, as a physician with MRI, but it wasn't until I moved to Minneapolis and met a researcher that was into looking at chronic disease. And he was the one that actually introduced me to the MRI. And he said, you know, you should... Uh, if you really want to reverse chronic disease and you're into health like you, you say you are, why don't you come to my research facility and we'll measure your visceral fat. And uh, I didn't know anything about it. Uh, I'd have been uh, at that point on a high fat, low carbohydrate, uh, paleo keto diet for about uh, two and a half, three years. I went to that facility and um, they scanned me. I was laying in the scanner. I was laying on that table and I had this epiphany. Uh, I was super scared. I thought, well, you know, if I have gone through this diet and I, I don't, I'm not healthy, I'm going to be pretty disappointed, <laughs> you know, in this. And uh, the scanner tech, after he finished scanning me, walked out and he said, I didn't, I didn't know him. He just looked down at me. He goes, you are obscenely healthy. And uh, it was almost like, you know, the first time your, your girlfriend's significant ever tells you, you look, you know, they love you. 
it just felt so awesome. It just, it was so affirming. And uh, I, up to that moment, I, I didn't really know all my skills and medicine and all the lab tests I was doing on myself. I didn't really know how healthy I was until I went through and had that MRI scan and they explained it to me. Uh, he took me in the back and he showed me the images of my visceral fat, showed me my muscles and, you know, uh, compared me to thousands of other people. And I felt awesome. So in that moment, I had this epiphany that this, this really is what we should be doing. We should be using the uh, kind of the Star Trek Dr. Bones uh, scanner, you know, device not to look at, um, you know, something to treat, but to see how healthy people were and to, to encourage them. So from that moment on, I got super interested in that kind of research and, and I've been using the MRI scanner now to look at that particular biomarker, visceral fat. And since then we've gone on to look at pericardial fat and then atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, you know, disease within the arteries, and looking at as many biomarkers inside the body to help people uh, not just get healthy, but to become optimally healthy, following, following these biological markers to, to help motivate people that uh, yeah, you, you don't just wanna lose some weight. You know, when you, when you really work in purpose to optimize the health of your body, then you begin to see the powerful applications of a healthy lifestyle, how that changes your life. And uh, so I'm just super excited for the past uh, six years, uh, five, six years, I've been using this MRI scanner to, to study people and help them become optimally healthy. Sean, the, the MRI stuff I think is really interesting because when I think of MRIs, a lot of times I think of kind of like a reactive type of a process where like you have something that's been bothering you for you know, X number of weeks, you go in and get an MRI done to find out exactly what's going on. So you have some direction. Whereas it sounds like you kind of like took it to the other side of the spectrum where it was like, let's look at folks who we assume are healthy or, or maybe not, but some folks who probably assume are healthy. And then we get a better look at what that looks like as well as how they look compared to other people who are maybe outwardly healthy. And uh, as I was looking into some, some of the stuff you're doing with the MRI work, uh, I was listening to one of your videos and you were talking about kind of just this idea of getting healthy versus optimizing. Could you tell our listeners a bit about kind of what the difference is or what you consider the differences in terms of just getting healthy versus like optimizing your health and then kind of how the MRI stuff had, has been very useful in that kind of quest? Yeah, that's a great question. So, uh, you know, the biggest surprise that we got is as you get rid of visceral fat you work on that target you eradicate chronic disease. So we, uh, we would track the elimination disease, uh, different symptomatology people had. We took these images to the National Science Foundation. We got a grant from the National Science Foundation and showed how when you eliminate visceral fat, you eliminate uh, manifestations of chronic disease. And that's, that's all well and good. I mean, nobody wants to have chronic disease. But here's where there's hope for humanity is when you eliminate chronic disease, you increase human performance. And that's something that's exploitable. So you literally get people to perform better. So when you focus on these biomarkers, not for the purpose of treating disease, but eradicating disease, the end result is human performance increases. So that means corporations and organizations that understand this, can exploit that approach to get their people performing better. Not to be slave masters, but you leverage improving their health, reducing healthcare costs, and the end result is people perform better. So that only happens when you optimize people's health. So just you know, getting people to lose 10 pounds, you know, getting them to, you know, to stop smoking, that's all well and good. Those, those things certainly are beneficial, and I do get my 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 clients my my uh, that I work with to to do that. But I try to adopt the approach of informing clients that I work with that the more you do, the additive effects that you get on top of those things. So it's it's really synergistic. So you know, uh, losing weight, particularly getting rid of visceral fat. You don't know if you're losing muscle. Don't know if you're just losing subcutaneous fat or visceral fat. And between those three things, you want to lose visceral fat. And then, you know, subcutaneous fat. And least of all, 
you, you, you want to preserve, uh, you don't want to lose muscle, so you want to prever, preserve that. So our approach, the approach I like to, to take is to, to help educate people to this new concept of optimizing your health. And I think being healthy, that's boring. That's just average. What, what I think is missing in medicine today in healthcare is the notion of modeling the optimization of health. We have role models for the best basketball players, the best football players, the best attorneys, the best finance people. Where are the health models? Where are those models optimizing the healthiest people in the world? We find them, we promote them, we change humanity. And that's, what, that's my passion. So I'm looking for the healthiest men and women in the world. I wanna make them more healthy. I wanna model that and make it attractive. So young boys and girls, teenagers, people out there that have disease can look to those models and change their lives and say, I want to optimize my health too. And I think it really hasn't happened yet because most of the advice that people get are really not that effective and it doesn't have that much of an of a impact. But when you add these things up together, you really do optimize people and it's just a matter of getting that word out and promoting it that I think is going to make a difference. Hey, Sean, let me, let me just interject.